Hey guys, welcome to another episode. Today we are jumping in on the dash of our 1982 Fiat 124 Spider. We're gonna be taking off our entire padded dash here. This is the original one. Um, it's all cracked up and this is not what we're gonna want in our final piece, in our final project. So we're gonna remove that. And while we're also out working on this, we're gonna take apart our gauges and clean the glass. They're really fogged up, some worse than others but these are actually really easy to take out and clean. I'm gonna show you guys how to do that, as well as taking off the entire dash. We already have our windshield and our frame out. Our steering wheel is already off and all of our lower and center console pieces are out. So it's a lot easier to do once you already have those pieces out. So we're gonna start taking this apart, a really straightforward, easy process. I'm gonna show you how to do it, as well as cleaning up these gauges and getting them crystal clear yet again, just like they were back in 82. So let's get started and take this thing apart. The first thing we're gonna to need to do is remove your steering wheel. Now I put it back on really quick just to show you even though mine was already off. This outer plastic cast here, you can squeeze it and you work it back and forth. Might take two hands. It's got three little tabs and it should come straight out when you squeeze it just like this. And you'll wanna be careful because it's got a spring, the center cap, the spring, and that'll reveal the nut. And to remove this nut, you'll need a 15 16 socket. That's what I did to remove it. You break it loose. Set the nut in the center uh, cup that's on here and you remove the wheel just like that to remove your contacts for your horn. Just set that to the side. And now you would normally have a top cover like this one plus a bottom cover. That bottom cover has three screws, two on the left, one on the right and you would unscrew it from the bottom. That would drop the bottom half of this, this steering uh, column cover and then the top half should be able to be worked back and forth out just like this. Tore it, it'll come out. And we also set that to the side with our steering wheel. The next piece we're gonna wanna remove are these four bolts here. They should normally be finger tight just like this one, I can get them all started. Those should be finger uh, tight. They shouldn't be much tighter than that. If you are having trouble, you can use a pair of pliers, but you may wanna put a rag or something in between here and then start turning them. That way you don't damage the, the decorative outings here. Then in the center, where our wiper speed dimmer switch are, these outer chrome rings also unscrew, should also be relatively finger tight, just like that. And we can remove those and we'll be able to pull our face forward for our display in our dash. After those are removed, typically you'll have your trip dial here in the middle. You can normally grab that and start wiggling out your dash. Um, mine is removed for some reason, so I can start pulling it forward just a little bit. Now we've got to be careful because our speedometer cable is still attached to our back of our speedometer. And if it fights you just as much as it's fighting me, we're going to have to remove that. This middle section should be able to come out relatively simple, just like this. And it should expose the light bulbs on the back side, just like that. And what we can do is we'll take our blue tape and we'll label them. That way, as we pull it forward and we go to reassemble, we'll know which one goes where. You'll also want to be careful on the back here. It looks like someone's taped them up, which isn't, it's not factory option, surprisingly. Not factory, but these are two separate wood pieces that fit in here to cover these. So as you pull this out and they may fall on you, so just be aware of that. Set those to the side and let's jump underneath and get that speedometer cable detached. That way we can get it fully out. So let's jump underneath our dash here. We're going to come up. Here's our fuse panel. We're going to continue up. Hopefully this light doesn't wash you out and you should see our speedometer cable. Well, it should be right there. You'll see that maroon and, and brass color right behind that uh, black wire that is pressed our speedometer cable. Oh, 
hole. So we're gonna have to detach that. You're gonna reach your hand up here. Well, now you guys don't have any light. You'll have to take my word for it because it's hard to do with just two hands here, but you'll have to get up there and take that out. I'll show you guys when we get up here and take the dash out what that looks like um, when we go to reassemble it also. So our speedometer cable is removed on the back side, so we should be able to start moving this dash out a little easier. Yeah, much easier. Kind of do a wiggle. I don't want to force it. This dash is pretty brittle um, just for being weathered not taken care of and I'm pulling it straight out and you'll see why as we start to remove it see some of our stuff start to pop out already all right and there we go that's behind our dash <clears throat> um, our speedometer cable is right back here let me see if I can bring it out so you guys can see it. So there's a little gap here. I'll show you guys. There's a little gap here in this maroon housing. And it's actually the perfect width for a flathead screwdriver into that gap. And you just pull back on the sleeve and it releases from the speedometer uh, backing where the dial is right here. And of course, when we go to put it back together, way down the road, you push it forward and it squeezes on these fingers and those fingers are what grip in a gap down here. So that's how you detach that. So we're gonna push that back in there. So it's out of our way. And that grease is out of our way as well. So this is a very important step and I think a lot of people end up skipping it because they're like, hey, I'm gonna remember, it's not a big deal is labeling your connections. Um, a lot of times the wires feed through the same color all the way through, but it's not necessarily always the case. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spend some time with some blue tape and a permanent marker and start labeling these wires. Um, you know, 10, 15 minutes of my time here will save me a lot of time in the future um, when it comes to replugging everything in, going back and forth between a wiring diagram, especially because we tested these um, before we took it apart in the last video, I'll make sure to drop a link up in the top for that. Um, so that way we know they work. So when we go to put it back together, it should work again. So I'm gonna spend some time labeling all this, um, and then we'll be able to unplug these connectors and get it away from the dash, and we'll be able to move over to the glove box. We're gonna move on to our glove box and you twist the knob and it should drop down. Just to make it easy, you can remove these four Phillips screws here or on the underside of the dash, there are some more. But just for ease, I'm gonna remove these. All right, so I always put the hardware back in the place they go. It makes it easier to find. Now you may run into a situation like this where the uh, nut that goes in there that I, the, the screw actually threads into pulls out. Now that'll happen, don't worry about it. But what can always happen is you put some glue back in here and then you re-screw back in and it'll hold just fine. So don't worry about that. That can be repaired if you're gonna reuse the same panel. I'm gonna see about potentially making new ones or resourcing, uh, sourcing some new ones, but stay tuned in a future episode for that. In order to know when that happens, you have to subscribe. So don't forget to subscribe. That way you can see as we continue to build on this project and other good tips like this on how to do things like this. So we're gonna set this to the side. And by the side, I mean behind us. And now we're into our glove box. Now there may be some stuff in there, make sure you take that out. But there's also gonna be screws on the inside. There's one on the right side, two towards the center on the left. Mine happen to be Phillips. I think those are probably original what they would use.
So when you get these screws loose, now there may be a nut on the back side. In my situation, I do, so I have to get back underneath there and hold them in place while I unscrew them. But on top here, there's gonna be two eight millimeter bolts that also hold it to the top. So you're gonna to wanna to remove those and then it should, with a little bit of persuasion, come out for you. And once you take those out, your striker plate for your latch will come out. All right, so we've got those screws out, the two on top, one in the bottom middle, two on the left, one on the right. And we should be able to kind of just work it out. Just like that. And now we have complete access to the back here. So what we're gonna be looking for is gonna be something like this. There's gonna be, I don't know how well y'all gonna see it. There's a nut right here. There's also one underneath right here. There's also going to be another one on top over here, right, with my hand in the block it. It's going to be right in there. And same thing on the other side corner, right above the fuse box. Now, your car may have these dash caps, these ones at the ends. If they do, they don't just slide out. They've actually got a screw on the underside right under here that hold them in place. And if you don't unscrew those, you'll actually break these end caps. And that's what it looks like happened here. Is there's a crack near the screw. So we'll have to replace this one. But these are actually the decorative end caps that hide the ugly metal on the sides. So we're gonna unscrew these. There's one on each side here and there. These are just a small Phillips screw that are holding them in. Pull those out and work those four, two on the top, one on each side. And then this whole thing should be able to come out and we'll be able to take a better look um, with everything out. So we're at the stage where we can pull our dash away from the car. We're making sure that everything is clear out of the way. That way nothing gets snagged on it. All four of our bolts, well two bolts, two nuts are removed. Those were eight millimeters. Um, luckily they're all the same size. So hopefully that means no one's actually been in here before. So we'll see when we get this thing out. But it should be relatively loose, just like this, to where we can get up and away. Um, away from the heater box, which is behind here and these vents are kind of attached to. So let's see if it'll come out. All right, our dash is out. The last things we had to disconnect was our headlight switch here at the end. It's just a, a big square connector. We'll make sure to label that so we don't forget where that goes and the orientation and uh, which way is up in other words. But our dash is out. We pulled it out nice and slow. There are some hooks on the back for those center lights here, like this one, um, just to make And Sometimes previous owners may zip tie stuff to the back, things like that. So you wanna be real careful not to pull it off aggressively. That way you don't pull any wires. So let's get this uh, on the bench and a little bit closer look. So we've got it on the bench here and you can see just how cracked and gone, separated here, up here. Just really, really bad shape that this dash was. So what you can do to replace this is either spend the big money and get an actual padded replacement dash. You can get a fiberglass replica one. 
I've done that before. But we're going with this option. I'm going to bring this over here to the bench. This is an example of an old dash with a full dash cap. So it's a plastic cap that sits on top of the old dash. So if you've got something like this, you can actually get a plastic cap to cover it. And that's what this one is. We got this one from our friend Graham. You may have met him before in one of our past videos where we took our X19, our friend's X19, on a Fiat car meet trip. I'll make sure to drop a link for that up here for you guys to check that one out. But we're gonna make sure that these are actually the same. We can see we've got the cutout and the bump here. Really? All right, let's try this again. Now that that has decided to cooperate, we're gonna make sure that it's the same. So we've got the same cutout here as the other one. Got the cutout, got the bump in the middle, bump in the middle. We've got like a D-shape here, D-shape here, D-shape, D-shape, and a diamond, diamond. And we've got the hinges. We'll have to take that one out. And it looks like it's the same shape, pattern, size. This one's got a little bit newer, I don't know if I want to call them newer vents, but they're definitely cleaner. That's for sure, than these. I don't know what all this Velcro is about. So, I think this is going to be a good replacement, but before we go jumping in and reversing the entire process we did to put this back in, we're going to go back here and check our wiring to make sure that we don't have any broken connections. We can see everything is nicely labeled, and we'll make sure that nothing is shorting out. I don't know why it would. Everything worked in the car. It'll also be a good time to clean any grounds back here. Um, there is a grounding pod under the dash, so you want to make sure you clean that. That way, it's all grounded well, as we have learned in past videos. Grounding locations get dirty very easy. So we're going to go through and clean all these up, all these connections here. Um, this is also be a good time to pull our gauge cluster here and clean all the connections on the back, as well as replace light bulbs. Um, this is just a really good opportunity to make some improvements and uh, clean all that dust, especially out of our heater box, because that's really gross. Get that all clean, remove some of that old installation, maybe upgrade it with something else, and make it look a little uh, fresher under here. So let's get to cleaning, and we can jump into these gauges, and I'll show you how to clean uh, these glass pieces. Really easy, real straightforward and we'll hop over to the bench and knock it out. So let's get ready to clean our gauges. When we look at these, yeah, they're definitely foggy. They definitely need to be cleaned up and we're even missing glass for our clock. But our worst offender is definitely gonna be our fuel gauge. So we're gonna start with that one. It's the same process across them, but we're gonna do one just so I can show you guys. And we're then gonna repeat that process across all the others. The first thing we're wanting, gonna wanna do is put down some towels to make sure we don't scratch the glass face, or any of the faces for that matter, just like that. And there's going to be a little retaining nut, like that one there. And they're a little different across. Um, some have one, some have two, depending on the size. And this one's got one on the back, which is really the bottom. Should be finger tight, and if not, you can always grab a pair of pliers and get that to work for you. This one's a little tight for me, so I'm gonna just break it loose and then do the rest by hand. That way not to ruin the texture of the nut. I'm gonna remove the nut, and we're gonna remove that bracket, and of course we're gonna keep our pieces together as to not lose them. And the gauge will come through the front. So with that out, now we've got the gauge free. Um, as always, this would be a good time to clean the connections for your lights, the terminals on the back, um, all these here. If you can push these out safely without breaking the old plastic, you can always clean these connections, but mine don't look too bad, so I may not mess with those. So we're gonna say for this video's sake that we cleaned all these connections, these are all nice and clean, and we can move on to our face. So you can see, that there are little locating tab here 
and you can see it on there. And we're going to move all the way around. And this black um, bevel here, this, this edge, is actually just wrapped around the outside. So what I'm going to do is take a fine screwdriver I'm just going to slowly work it in the wrist little by little to get that out. So we've got the bezel off. You can see just how clean our gauge actually is. And our glass and trim ring are still in here. So it'll take a little bit more work, gentle, gentle work, to get the plastic ring off, which we will clean. Then the glass, which we can see is super dirty, and the ring. Now, don't mind all these little indents on the back. When we go to press this back on, it all folds back over and gets hidden because all you see is that. So it's nice and clean. Don't worry about all this stuff. It'll eventually fold it back into the gauge. So don't worry about that. The next thing we're gonna do is add a little bit of glass cleaner or a lot, you choose, and we're gonna clean it. Make sure we don't have any streaks on the inside for sure because you'll look at it and you'll drive yourself crazy looking at streaks. It was an actually pretty straightforward and pretty simple process to clean all these to where you can actually see right through them and you can see exactly what we're supposed to be seeing as far as what the car is telling us information wise. We were even able to take out the bulbs and give a good test to all of them, clean up the connections, tighten up the prongs that are in there to make sure it actually has a good grip on the light bulb because sometimes that makes all the difference when it comes to making them a little bit brighter as well as cleaning the ground connections that they have um, internally and on the body itself that way we have good solid connections while we have it out of course this may not be the end up being the wood piece that we really want to use um, I just put it back together so it's easier to keep all the pieces together and it keeps the, the faces from getting scratched again or at all. So um, it's a good way to protect them. We'll probably wrap them up and put them, put them to the side um, as we go to install our dash, our new one, new to us dash. And it's just a reverse of the process that we just, uh, just did at the beginning of this episode. But this is gonna be it for this episode, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Just make sure you subscribe, like, and comment. Subscribing really, really helps me out to continue to make content for you guys so I can help you 
with your project and keep these cars on the road. I really enjoy doing this. Um, I'm not gonna be perfect by any means, but I really do enjoy doing this and reaching out to you guys and hearing the stories that you have about your cars and what you're working on. Make sure you guys can join us on Facebook, Instagram. I'm on social media, so make sure you follow me along there. And uh, as, well, as always, if I can even speak, until next time, we'll see ya.